Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar City Smartphone Astronomy. Now, I got a new telescope. Now, I know, I know, you guys are gonna say, don't I have enough already? But really, I really need this guy, okay? I promise, I need this guy, so I got it, okay? <clears throat> so, we're talking about the Skywatcher Heritage 150. Okay, not the 130. So let's talk about this and I'll explain to you and I guarantee you after you watch this video, you're gonna understand why I need it, okay? See you in a bit. Okay, here we go. So we have it out of the box type of thing. And now, before we start, let's talk about something. Now, in 2019, if you look I also did a review of the Skywatcher Heritage 130. Now, I know what some of you might say. I didn't give it that great of a rating. I gave it kind of like so-so. And the reason is I just want to spend just less than two minutes because I don't want to go over everything, okay? I think this is a great buy. However, I did not think that was a great buy, the 130. Here's why. Okay, so here is why because the 130 millimeter is a 5.1 inch um, and it compresses, which is great. But then the focuser is the problem and then you gotta get a dew shield for it or you know something like that or it's gonna do up, but that was okay. Now, also the tabletop tripod is, you know, that particle board, you know, that was one of the downfalls here. But here's why. Orion, Skywatcher, Mead, Celestron, all of them make 130 millimeter uh, f5 which is the exact same thing when it opens it's uh, most all those companies make a solid tube 130 millimeter uh, parabolic uh, reflecting telescope on an eq2 now the eq2 that those come are the newest type of eq2s which is already um vixen ready it's not the old kind where your rings uh, stay on the mount itself. So it's the newest type. So when I did that video, it was $2.99 Canadian retail. The All those other companies, a 5.1 inch, 130 millimeter reflecting telescope, parabolic, okay? And because it was solid tube, you didn't need, you didn't need a dew shield in the middle. The focuser is, is a, a proper rack and pinion focuser, not helical focusers. Um, also, you are getting a full height tripod. Now, it's also a little bit better because the tripod is a inch diameter steel legs, okay? EQ2, slow motion control. You can just point it north and you have tracking. It's the perfect height. You don't need a table. So that was the reason why I gave the 130 millimeter Heritage a little bit not as good rating when I did that video was because the cost of it cost as much as the other versions from the other manufacturers but on a full height tripod mount with slow motion controls so if i was going to pay the same money i'd rather get that uh, instead of the 130 heritage um, now maybe if it was 199 then okay with the, the base there's no slow motion controls you need a a full height tripod or a table it's a helico focuser which isn't the great you need to do the the dew shield type of thing then i think it would have been worth the money but for 299 the only advantage it has is it compresses for portability that's it everything else was a disadvantage now this on the other hand if you try getting a six inch f5 parabolic mirror uh, the one that comes to mind is normally the celestron omni canadian that's 9.99 before tax so you're looking about 1200 dollars. now prices have gone up since i've done that video three years ago but even with its current price of 420 canadian dollars the equatorial mount version is like 9.99 there's a huge difference. So which means this is a very good price for what you're getting. Even though you still need a table, helical focuser, and you still need that dude shield thing, it's still less than half price. So it's a good buy. 
Okay, so let's get to this video now. Okay, let's get to this video here. So, as you guys can see, this is the, what they call the mini daub or the tabletop daub, has a nice handle here. Now, one of the downfalls is, um, you know, this is that particle board. So to begin with, it's decent. Uh, it's a bit bulky. If you're gonna be carrying this like backpacking, camping, um, unless you have a car, it's still gonna be a little bit bulky and I don't like the particle board. Uh, but what you could do is trace it out into nice hardwood plywood. I probably would make this circle thing and maybe the bottom a little bit smaller if you wanted to. It doesn't have to quite be, you know, you can probably shrink it at least two inch diameter. Uh, so that does make some difference if you want to, you know, make it a bit smaller. Now the bearings is probably Teflon. It's okay. It's not super smooth. Uh, but it's not bad. It's, but really, I don't think I'm going to use this mount at all. I'm just going to use, I bought it for the telescope. Let me just raise it, I guess. Now it comes with the Vixen bar, which is the normal. And what's really nice is you're getting full six inch aperture. And um, it compresses. So basically this is probably like an F2.5. And it raises to an F5. Now you have the same issue as the other one where you're gonna need a dew shield here and maybe even extend it maybe up, you know, a good six inches, I would say. Um, or this uh, secondary mirror here is going to, let me take this sun thing out. Or the secondary mirror is going to um, do up. So that's one thing. And it still uses the same helico focuser. It's not great, but it's okay. I guess it gets the job done. Everything else about it is good. Parabolic mirror. It has a center dot or center circle there. So you can uh, collimate it. Has about a four inch dovetail or a vixen bar. So you can put it on any uh, mount you want. Maybe an altazimuth. Uh, type of thing, um, an equatorial. So why I need this guy is me and Angelus are planning to go to Mexico uh, this year. Uh, four weeks in total, one week probably going to be to Cabo and then three, we three weeks elsewhere. Now, so I am... Now, the last time I went to Mexico was in Cancun area. And I brought with me a 80 millimeter uh, F5 refracting telescope, just those basic acromats. And it's good on an AZ3, you know, type of thing, but it's a little small, right? So this time when I go to some dark skies, I want something bigger. Now I thought of the Heritage 130, uh, again, I guess, but 5.1 inch is good, but a full six inch would be better. I wanted something wide field, like F5, because I want to see uh, deep sky stuff. So at home, my latitude is 43 degrees north, right? And where we're going to be, I believe, is at least 20 to 22 degrees. So which means technically, whatever I can see from my place in Toronto here, I should be able to see another 20 to 20 degrees south, which is what I want. And it's mainly gonna be the deep sky objects, clusters, um, globular clusters, any nebulas or galaxies that I can't see from here that are too low. So I will not, when I travel, I am not gonna look at the planets or double stars because the planets could be observed anywhere. I don't need to go down south to look at the planets, right? So I wanna see stuff that I can't see from here. So for me, an 80 millimeter F5 Acromat is okay, but I want something that goes deeper. Yes, I can, you can get a four and a half inch reflecting telescope type of thing, the 130 millimeter, but I want it to go as big as I can carry in a suitcase. Of course, I'm gonna pad it, and that's lightweight, right? So this is probably the biggest that I was gonna go. Now, I also was thinking about it. What about a six inch SCT? Now I have that too. Let me show it to, to you guys side by side. 
and why I still chose this. Okay, I got the camera closer. So here is the Heritage, six inch F5 is compressed. This is a six inch Mead SCT. Uh, the Celestron version should practically be the same size. So basically, if you look where, the, I mean, the actual tube is here, uh, I mean, there's no diagonal, there's no visual back, but if you look basically where the focuser ends, it's pretty much within a quarter of an inch. And so this guy, without any accessories, is already 10, 11 pounds, and this one's about seven pounds. So it's the, practically the same size, this one has a much wider field of view than this one being at F10. So I think I'm just gonna take this one because I want the wide fields. And if I wanna push the power, I can just put a stronger eyepiece type of thing. And that's it. This one, if there's any big, large clusters or nebulas there, uh, I'm not gonna, I might not be able to go as low or wide in an SCT. So even though uh, I have this guy already, I'm probably, uh, I think just going to uh, get rid of this guy and keep this guy for traveling. And again, if I pad this around, it should still fit in like a large suitcase. And then with, you know, whatever, uh, everything else that I need. Why I chose this guy. So let me put this guy away. So going back to this guy, um, again, everything else is okay. I mean, it's not gonna be, this is not my main telescope. So I, I really don't care too much about the focuser. I'll fix the, um, the dew shield. Um, actually, I'm, what I'm thinking is the padding that I'm gonna have could just extend up to two here and then that's it. You know what I mean? So it could, it could serve as the padding and the dew shield all in once. And then I am just might just bring a barlow and maybe a zoom eyepiece and that's probably all I need. A few filters, uh, nebula filters that all. And that's it. So that's why I got this. I don't like I don't like the base too much. I don't really like Dobsonians uh, overall because I just don't like the, there's no tracking at all. Now, if you guys saw, I'm using the 12 inch, which is fine for low power, but I, I, I don't like it. I'm gonna put this on a, an AZ mount. Uh, that way it's lighter and uh, that's it. So really, I think this is a very good buy again because Currently, with the prices up, when this first came out over a year ago in Canada, that is, uh, or maybe just over a year ago, um, the price was I think 390. The first batches were gone fairly fairly quickly, and then after that, the price went to 420 Canadian, and that's what I got. With taxes, was like four 474 dollars, so it wasn't so cheap. And it's too bad. Maybe I should have I should have really got it when it just came out the first batch, but it been back ordered now for minimum nine months to 12 months it's been back ordered so but this i think will serve my needs and again this is not my uh main purpose telescope or the one i'm going to see all this is going to be my travel one uh you know so by traveling on an airplane type of thing um and it's it's big it's lightweight somewhat lightweight i guess i just compared to an 80 mil F5 refractor. This is a lot bigger, a lot, a lot heavier type of thing, but I'm going to see more. Now I know I did a video also about three years ago. I used a six inch F5 reflecting telescope on like a CG4 and that's what I took camping. Now it was a solid tube version. So this is virtually the same, but it compresses to half the size. If that's what you guys are thinking like me, maybe one of these might serve you guys really well because again, fairly large size for port, like for traveling. It'll collect a lot of light and it's a big wide field. I don't know if you guys are like me, but when I go out, uh, I, I don't really look at the planets. Now, unless I'm observing with brand new people and I want to show them Jupiter, Saturn or Mars or, or whatever, but I don't normally, if it's for me, I'm not looking at that because the planets look exactly the same from the country and the city, it looks practically the same. So there's no point looking at that stuff again. I wanna see stuff that I have not seen before or it's been a very long time since I've seen it. So that's why this guy's for. I think at even the uh, inflated $420 Canadian price is still decent because a six inch F5 reflecting telescope parabolic on an equatorial mount 
is about a thousand bucks Canadian if if you take the CG4 version. I guess if you get like a CG3, might be another hundred dollars less. But if you compare that again to an equatorial version with a mount and everything, it's more than double. Um, so this is still a good price type of thing. Where the 130 again, it was based on price compared to the full version or the full height equatorial version, uh, uh, solid two version, it was the same price. So if it's the same price, example, if this was the same cost as the equatorial version, then I don't think I would give this a two thumbs up because i rather get that instead of this with this guy. But because it's less than half the price, then it's okay. It's a good bargain for this. Okay, guys, that's it. So this is my travel scope. Uh, if I go to Mexico, obviously I'll do some videos when I'm there. And I'm also going to do something really Frankenstein-ish to this guy. But you guys are going to have to watch. I don't know if it's going to be the next episode or the next episode after that. But I'm going to hack this guy in a way that I have not seen anybody on YouTube do. Now, stay tuned. I'm not going to say what it is. You'll just have to stay tuned to the next few videos when I hack this guy out. Because it's not going to look like this when I'm through with it. So, anyway, Joe Jaguar out. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you're on the forums and somebody is asking for a video like this or any ones I've done, please share the link. If you know anybody getting into astronomy, share my link. And why not you? Why not me? And remember, too, I now have a membership where it's only $99, 99 cents a month for videos and shout outs and uh, putting your name on the screen, uh, something like that, just for members. So if you'd like to join, I also have thumbs up and likes uh, and thanks on each video where if you want to contribute that way, would appreciate it. That will help the channel grow. Because every time I want to show you guys something, unfortunately, I have to buy it first. Anyway, guys, that's it. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, subscribe. Why not you? Why not me?